Let's say you're lifting something heavy. Uh, let's say you're at the gym, you're a bodybuilder, or you're trying to be a bodybuilder. And you've got uh, dumbbells and you're exercising. You, maybe you're putting plates on for the bench press. And let's say you drop a 25 pound, maybe a 45 pound on your foot and it crushes your foot. Do you think that piece of steel is going to feel bad about crushing your foot? Do you think that piece of steel is going to care that it crushed your foot? No, not at all. I liken steel, heavy things hurting you, crushing you. I liken it to the powers that be. They don't care about your feelings. They don't care about the fact that you are a mother or that you are a father. They don't care about what skills you have. They don't care about what dreams you have. They don't care about how many children you have, how many ambitions you have, your goals and your dreams. They do not care. The powers that be do not care about your feelings. All they care about is what you are worth to them. First, I want to acknowledge that this Ukraine-Russian conflict is affecting everyone in the world one way or another. But with that said, I want the Ukrainian people, I want the Russians to know that my hearts are with you, that my prayers are with you, as your worlds are completely coming crashing down at this time. Now, this morning at the time of the recording of this video, gold and silver is, are both slightly up. Gold is holding over 1900 and silver is, is pushing about $24.5. All the U.S. markets are down as expected. I know I understand that last Friday the, the markets had a little bit of a rally. Uh, I, I, I never thought that that would be long-lived. I was really surprised to hear and learn that a lot of people thought that uh, what happened on Friday was a sign that the markets were coming back. My friends, I'm sorry to say this, but if, if you believe that the U.S. markets, the stock markets, are going to make a recovery or a rally anytime soon, I'm afraid you, you really do not see the big picture and do not understand the gravity of the situation with what is going on in Eastern Europe right now. And with the upcoming conflicts that we're going to be witnessing in Southeast Asia here soon. It is my belief, despite how many people are trying to spin uh, President Biden's actions and words in a positive way, it is my belief that uh, President Biden has shown the world a lot of weakness coming from America. It should be no secret, it should be no surprise to anyone that China has been wanting to destabilize the world for a very long time. Now, believe me, I understand that a lot of Americans have a hard time accepting reality and truth. A lot of Americans want to just go about their lives like as if the, there's no conflict and there's no problems outside of our country. And it's become the norm to label outside of our country conflicts as conspiracy theories. However, if you do not believe or know that China is the second largest economy in the world and they have been wanting to be number one for a very long time, then your eyes have been shut, your ears have been closed out, and you, you guys are not just paying attention. The Chinese economy has been suffering greatly these last couple years, and they will do anything to turn things around for them. There seems to be no better opportunity than now for China to take action in seizing, retaking, Taiwan and bringing Taiwan back to China. Basically the same vision that Putin has had with Ukraine. My friends, if you are hearing about this for the first time, and if you have not known anything about China having the desire to bring Taiwan back to their fold, then your heads have been in the sand. You guys have got to know and understand that China has been wanting to do this for a very long time, and they've been building up their military strength, building up their military power in order to do so. They've even had their diplomats talk about this for, for many years, about how they want Taiwan back with them. We have been a protection for Taiwan for a very long time, regardless to our connections with the UN, with NATO, with a collective group of countries I don't believe anything is going to stop China from attempting to take Taiwan. And with what we had witnessed in Afghanistan this past year, and with what we're watching in Ukraine right now, I would have to say that uh, the chances are looking pretty high for China to accomplish this. One cannot argue if China does go ahead and invade and attempt to take Taiwan, this will be World War III. And with that, 
more military conflicts will come about. We're all familiar with the old phrase, the old saying, money is what makes the world go round. Here in the United States, we have already been experiencing a downturn with our banking system, and I believe it's only going to get worse. My friends, the worst thing we can do right now is panic. There is no need to panic, but there is a need to make a change in our spending habits there's a need for us to make a change in how we use our money. I myself and many others of us here on YouTube and in other sources have been talking about preparations for this for a very long time. However, if you have not done much for yourself or for your family, it's not too late. There's still a lot that you can do to prepare. And I'll cover more of that here in just a moment towards the end of the video. There's a lot of conflicting reports and analysts about the real estate market. No matter where you look, there's going to be changes. There's going to be some difficult times ahead. This war is much more than just a war about soldiers with weapons. This is a war of the minds. I believe World War III will consist of being a war of the mines. Albert Einstein was asked, what weapons? How will World War III be fought? Albert Einstein responded with, I do not know, but the next war, World War IV, will be fought with rocks and sticks. I personally believe when Albert Einstein was asked that question, the person, the individual asking the question was probably expecting Albert Einstein to say that he was expecting World War III to be fought with nuclear power. At least it's easy for, for us to, to assume that that's why the question was being asked. However, my friends, I believe that World War III has already begun. I believe that this war will be known as the War of the Mines. Now, don't get me wrong. Every other war has had strategic planning behind. Every war prior has had planning that has used and required people's minds. However, I believe that this war is not necessarily being fought by those that we see, those who are head of countries and head of nations. I believe that this war, the war of the minds, is being fought and is being strategically planned by others that we do not see, others that we will never see, and I believe that we will truly never fully understand who our real enemy is. I just don't believe it's who we think it is. And I personally believe that a lot of this is coming within, within our own country here, the United States of America. Now, I have to be careful what I share, what I say. I don't want this channel to get shut down. I don't know exactly how relevant it is for us to know who our enemy is, but the best thing we could be doing for ourselves right now, for our family, is to prepare and have the means and to have what we need to survive. But with all this said, while there is a lot of badness in this world and within our nation and even within our communities, a lot of evil, I believe there's a lot more goodness around the world. There's a lot more goodness within our country. There's a lot more goodness within our communities. But we need to recognize that goodness and we need to bring it together. We need to be able to find a way to strengthen ourselves, us, we the people. I do want to take a moment and talk about our enemy, our enemies within. Now, I want to try to help you all understand how exactly our enemy thinks of us, okay? I want you to imagine that you're, you're standing too close to a car or a truck, and that car or that truck runs over your foot. Do you think that car or that truck is going to know that it ran over your foot? Do you think that car or that truck is going to care that it just crushed your foot? No, the car is not going to care. The tire, the wheel, the rubber, the steel, the fiberglass, whatever makes up of that car, that car is not going to care that it ran over your foot, nor is it going to feel bad. Let's say you're lifting something heavy. Uh, let's say you're at the gym, you're a bodybuilder, or you're trying to be a bodybuilder, and you've got uh, dumbbells and you're exercising. You, maybe you're putting plates on for the bench press, and let's say you drop a 25-pound, maybe a 45-pound on your foot and it crushes your foot. Do you think that piece of steel is going to feel bad about crushing your foot? Do you think that piece of steel is going to care that it crushed your foot? No, not at all. I liken steel, heavy things hurting you, crushing you. I liken it to the powers that be. They don't care about your feelings. They don't care about the fact that you are a mother or that you are a father. They don't care about what skills you have. They don't care about what dreams you have. 
They don't care about how many children you have, how many ambitions you have, your goals and your dreams. They do not care. The powers that be do not care about your feelings. All they care about is what you are worth to them, what you're going to contribute to their future, whether it be paying taxes, whether it has the ability to build a pyramids or whatever it is, but is uh, all they care about is what you are able to do for them. They don't care who you are. They don't care about your name. You might think that you're uh, maybe in the upper class. They may, you might be rich. You may be wealthy. You might be a billionaire. You might be worth uh, five hundred million dollars. Uh, there's a lot of people that are have great value. You might think that you're so important. You might think that uh, they care about you, but they don't even care about you either. The powers that be do not care about who you are. They don't care about how much wealth you have. Now they might find ways to take your wealth and to apply it to theirs but they do not care about you. Until you can fully understand that, you're just gonna to continue to live the way they want you to live and you're gonna to continue to live in their world. They do not care. Just like King George, how he did not care about the men and women who lived in the 13 colonies before they signed their Declaration of Independence. King George did not care about them. All he cared about was what they can do and give and provide for him. To all you parents out there, now with what we're talking about, with what we're discussing here, let's let's limit to how much we share with our children. I believe it's very important that we don't overburden our children with what is going on and what we need to be doing. Sure, we need to inform them uh, to some extent, but we need to do what we can to preserve the innocence of our children as much as we can. I believe it's very vital. Don't take away your child's childhood. Going back to what I was saying about there being more goodness than badness in the world, we need to try to find a way to focus more on what we have in common with each other. You know, whether it be our next door neighbors, those within our community, friends, family, people who live abroad on other sides of the world. We need to try to find a connection. We need to find a way to focus more on what common interest we have what we do have in common, rather than finding things that divide us and make us different from each other. This way of thinking is what's going to help strengthen us as a people, as a large collective body of people. Everything that we watch, everything that we listen to is designed to weaken our minds and to beat down our spirits, to slowly take away our souls. We can't allow that to happen. My friends, we need to find a way to pull together we need to stop allowing them to find ways to create anger, hate, and division. Do not allow yourself to fall victim to this war of the minds. Do not allow yourself to fall victim. We need to be strengthening ourselves. We need to be pulling together. Now, I want you to take a moment and ask yourself this question. What can I be doing today? What can I be doing right now to strengthen myself as an individual and to strengthen my family and my community. What can I be doing differently or what can I be doing more of today? No one can come up with this answer better than you yourself. I'm sure there are lots of countless thoughts and ideas that are coming to your mind right now, but if I could help you with one thing, I'm sure there are countless thoughts and ideas that are going through your head right now of what you can be doing to strengthen yourself, to prepare yourself, to help create a sense of independency for yourself. But I'm going to help you with one idea, and this should not be a surprise to most of you if you've been here watching my older videos. That is to find a way to hold, to obtain gold and silver. Now, don't get me wrong. Gold and silver is not the answer to everything, to every scenario. There are many other little things that we need. We need food, water, other commodities, other supplies, other things that we, we can use to protect ourselves. I just, I don't want to use those words, but you should know what I'm talking about. I just, I don't want this channel to get suppressed because I'm talking about something else that, that we could use for protection. My friends, this War of the Mines, this World War III, these conflicts that we have, has everything to do with power and control and with money. That's what this is all about. Power, control, money. So no, I'm not suggesting gold and silver be the only thing that you have. 
You need to have other things as well. But my friends, you decide how much gold and silver you need to have, how much gold and silver you want, how much gold and silver you can afford. Don't get crazy with it. You know, we, we still got some time. You know, we still got bills to pay. We still have other things that we need to do and take care of. I believe our economy is slowly going to shreds, but I, I do believe that we still, we, we should not put everything that we have into gold and silver. You know, in the past, in previous videos, I, I recommended, I suggest everybody have at least a bare minimum of five ounces of silver. Is that going to provide everything for you for a future to come? No, but I believe it's better than absolutely nothing. I know it's not easy. You know, if you could figure out a way to get your hands on at least five ounces of silver, say if you have nothing right now, you're looking at being able to uh, to accomplish that for for less than, about $150. $150 is not much money. Now, if you can't just go out and spend $150 and get silver, five ounces of troy ounces of silver, then start somewhere. Maybe start off with just one troy ounce. Maybe you can put some money aside. Maybe you can give up something. Maybe you can give up uh, smokes, alcohol, uh, maybe uh, not eat out as much. Uh, maybe stop buying soda. I shared in a previous video, that's what me and my family did. Uh, a couple of years ago, we, we we realized that we were spending almost five thousand dollars a year, just as a family, drinking and and having a soda pop when we go out to eat and when we would just go move about. We'd stop at a convenience store, uh, convenience station. We'd always get soda pop and we just enjoy drinks on our road trips. And we found out that you know by cutting back on that, that was allowing more money for us to put towards. Gold and silver, mostly silver. That's what that's what I've been mostly collecting these past few years, because I believe silver has been uh, greatly manipulated and the value of it has been kept down for a very long time. But here is why I say gold and silver. Gold and silver history. It, it, it's in the history books. China started uh, using uh, gold and silver as a currency like four thousand years ago. It's written. Uh, the uh, Roman Empire they used gold and silver. Okay, if, if you're religious like myself, I'm a Christian. If you read the Bible, uh, gold and silver has been talked about uh, going back as far as Moses uh, in Exodus. Uh, God himself was giving Moses instruction on how to use gold and silver, and it was provided so that there can be fair trade. Gold and silver today is still today's money. It, it should still be the standard, but there's been manipulation. There's been corruption that has taken us away from gold and silver God himself and even warned uh, prophets in, in the Bible about these fiat systems, about how they, they would allow man to corrupt and to gain wealth for themselves and to, to harm the, the little people, the, the poor people. So th there's nothing new here. The, the, this, this, this U.S. dollar, this fiat system that we're on right now is, is not a new inventive idea. Other nations have done this. Other nations have risen, and other nations have fallen for the same reasons that we are about to fall. Now, whether we're going to implode within because of our fiat system, or if it's just we've been funneled, uh, we've been manipulated and funneled into this, uh, this great reset that they are planning for us, either way you look at it, uh, they're, 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 they're trying to do a one-world order, not just a one-world order, but a one-world digital currency system. And if you have some gold and silver, real money, this is going to allow you to have more independency and more freedoms. If you don't have any gold and silver, then you're going to be solely dependent on their digital currency system, whatever it be called, whatever it has. I think they already got names for it, but who cares, right? I just don't think it's going to pan out the way they think it's going to. I don't think it's going to, I don't think the people are going to conform to it like they think we will, but... I'm not standing up against, I'm not calling for a, um, a rebellion at all. Me, I am a law-abiding citizen. I'm just saying, I just don't think things are going to pan out the way they say that, the way they think it's going to pan out. I just don't. But if and when they do create this currency system, they're going to keep track of everything. They will have absolute control and power over everything you do, everything, every. Everything that you do, they're 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 going to know what you're doing. They're going to be taxing the you know what out of you. They're going to you're you're not going to have a whole lot of freedoms. Gold and silver will allow you to have some of those freedoms. You'll still have a sense of money trade off the grid. You know, being off the grid has been a popular. It's like a pop culture here in the United States of America and Canada. A lot of people have been desiring to build homesteads off the grid. People have been living in their vans off the grid. 
you know, being off the grid is not a new idea. It's not a new concept. A lot of people have been desiring to do that. A lot of people have already been doing that. So it doesn't make any sense to me why someone would be so against gold and silver thinking, oh, that's just dumb. It ain't going to work. I'm not buying it. If you don't want to buy the gold and silver, if you don't want to have gold and silver for yourself and for your family, that that's your choice. But as what I'm saying here, in my opinion, it comes down to it's, it's a matter of having freedoms. It's a matter of having a sense of independency. Me, with all this said, in my opinion, I still think that silver is still the better buy. I still think that silver is the better one to get between the two. You know, a lot of people say, oh, the gold standard, the gold is king. And it, it is. If you wanted to make big purchases with gold, then, then gold is the one to have. It's, it's much more valuable. But not everybody can afford to get their hands on gold right now. Even though I do highly recommend if you are in a position to, to get gold, I say get some gold. However, you got to know this gold has been gold is being monitored you, you can't just walk into a local coin shop if you can walk into a local coin shop today either in Canada or in the United States of America and if you can get if you can buy some gold consider yourself pretty darn lucky if you can pay cash under the table for that gold I, it's it's not happening right now my friends and, and a lot of these coin shops if they do have gold they're getting down your information, or at least they're requesting it. Now, there might be some uh, dealers out there that are still willing to do deals under the table, but most of us who are buying gold today, we're buying through online dealers, and they're able to keep track of where that gold is going, They uh, the transactions, because you can't pay cash through the internet for your gold, so you're paying uh, through credit card, wire transfer, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, and so they, they know where that money is coming from, and they know where the gold is being shipped to. My friends, silver is the only thing that you could mostly really buy right now at a local coin shop without it being monitored. I have no doubt in my mind that that will continue on. I, I have no doubt in my mind that uh, the powers that be will, will keep track, and they will know how much gold you have, who has gold, who does not have gold, However, silver will continue to be a, a nice source of, of, of money, of personal, under-the-table trade, have you, black market, whatever you want to call it. Silver will continue, and you can get your hands on as much silver today without the powers to be to know about it. So I like silver. I think silver is definitely going to be more under the radar, and it's going to allow you to do more personal trade um, when we get on to this, uh, this globalization, which, like I said, I, I still don't think things are going to pan out the way they think it will be. But uh, there's definitely a lot of things we can be doing today to prepare ourselves, to allow ourselves, to put ourselves and our families in a situation where we can have a sense of independency and freedoms. My friends, what do you think? If you would, if you haven't yet, please leave a comment down below. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, I would greatly appreciate your, your subscribing to this channel. And please don't forget to give this video a like. Uh, the likes is what helps this channel to grow along with the subscribing. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video.